Hello everyone, we're going to be doing Recognize Direct and Inverse Variation in Khan Academy today. This is a supplement of Chapter 6 where it talks about inverse and direct variation. So let's go ahead and get started. So this Khan Academy is going to give you five different options of different types of equations and you're supposed to identify uh, the one it wants you to. In this case, it's asking which uh, equation shows inverse variation. So the first thing we need to identify and under or understand is what is inverse variation. Inverse variation is when we have a relationship where the variable on one side is not in the denominator of a fraction. If you want, you can think of it as in the numerator of a fraction. And the other variable is in the denominator of the fraction, and it's on the other side of the equal sign. Please note that there's no pluses or minuses on either side. It's got to be only multiplication on both sides, okay? K just represents some number, okay? So if we have y equals 2 over x, that would be inverse variation. If we had y equals 1 over x, that would be inverse variation. If we had a equals negative 3 over b, that would be inverse variation. All of these have a variable on one side of the equal sign by itself, and in the bottom, we have uh, a variable that's in the denominator, okay? That's all cases of inverse variation. So as we approach these problems, we need to look at each case and see, okay, do we have um, a variable on one side that's in the numerator and one side that's on the denominator? So for some of these, we're going to have to go ahead and solve and get the variable by itself. So I'm going to start at the bottom. In the bottom, we can see m minus n. And right away, because we have a minus in there, we know it's not going to be inverse. So let's say we try to get the m by itself by adding n to both sides. We would have m equals 1 over 6 plus n. If you have addition, it's not inverse variation. So we can rule out e. e is a bad choice. Here we see it's already solved for n here. But this is a case of direct variation, which I'm going to talk about later. So this one is out because we have n in the numerator and m in the numerator, nothing in the denominator of a fraction on either side. So we have a problem there. That's not inverse variation. Letter C would be tempting to put as inverse variation because of the uh, variables in the denominator. But here's the issue. Inverse variation is when, the, when one variable goes up, the other goes down. So we need one of these variables to be in the numerator. Here, both are in the denominator, so that's a problem. They need to look like these examples here, where one is by itself. So if this was 6m equals 1 over n, then we'd have a fighting chance at, at that potentially being inverse variation, but that's not the case. Or if this was n equals 6 times 1 over m, that'd be n equals 6 over m. Now we're talking about inverse variation, but that's not the case here either. So this is not uh, an example of inverse variation, okay? So we can rule out letter C, letter D. Now we have letter B. Notice how it's not solved for a variable. So what we need to do is we need to get one of the variables by itself, and the easier one to get by itself is M. To get M by itself, we need to get rid of the denominator. To get rid of the denominator, we need to multiply both sides by N. What happens when we do that? Well, it cancels out the n on the left side, and we're left with m equals 6 times n, or 6n. That is direct variation. Both are in the numerator. We don't have any variables in the denominator, so that's ruled out. So it's going to be option A, but why is it option A? Well, we need to solve for a variable. In this case, let's solve for m again. In order to get m by itself, we need to divide n to both sides because it's currently being multiplied by m. So if we want to do the opposite operation, we need to divide both, both sides by uh, n. We cross out on the left side, n divided by n is 1. m times uh, 1 is m. And then we have 6 over n. That is inverse variation, which is what we just talked about. So we're going to go ahead and select A as our answer. Check. There we go. Okay. This one's also inverse variation, so I'm actually going to skip this one. Actually, let me just go ahead and select the correct answer if I can find it. Uh, looks like right here. Okay, it's option A because we see that we have uh, 
A in the numerator over here and B in the denominator. It doesn't matter that this is uh, a fraction there. Okay, the only thing we're worried about is the variables. So option A is our choice. Okay, I want to get to a direct variation problem. All right, here we go. So direct variation. Direct variation is essentially y equals mx plus b, but where the b is zero. So y equals mx plus zero. This is rewritten in most cases as this, y equals kx, where k represents some number, okay? So we have y equals 2x is an example of direct variation, y equals negative 3x equals in, is the same thing as very uh, inverse variation, y equals, let's do negative 2 over 5x, that is direct variation. I hope I've been saying direct variation and not inverse, okay? I uh, hope you understand what I mean. Or we could say m equals uh, 25, n that is direct variation because we have variables one is solved by itself and then we have the other also in the numerator not in the, the bottom of, of a, a fraction with just some constant being multiplied and it can be a fraction okay so this could be 1 over 25 that would be good too for direct variation and also please note that it can't have like plus 2 or minus 3 there can't be any addition or subtraction in this either okay so direct variation are all these examples. So what we need to do is we need to just go through each one and see where we see that. So right away, I'm gonna rule out D, we have addition and subtraction. E, I'm ruling out because we have uh, X in the denominator, X in the denominator again with Y in the numerator, Y in the numerator. Uh, in order to get Y by itself, we need to divide by X. If we divide by x, we're going to get y equals 1 over 3x. That's no good. Here we already have it in direct variation form, so we're going to go ahead and select a as our answer. That is direct variation. Let's do one more. Oh, this is inverse variation, which we've already discussed. Uh, and make sure we have one in the numerator and the other variable in the denominator, and we're good to good. Good to go, okay? Hope you guys found this helpful. Good luck with this exercise, and see you next time.